Welcome, my name is Anthony and I'm with Aime from Rise Up Studios and we're going to play through RoboQuest. So let's just get into this. Hi, Aime. How are you? Hi, I'm fine. Thank you. All right, fantastic. So I am the leader of this game. So I apparently I start this, yes? Or can you start it? A oh, friend ready to start the game? All right. This is my first time playing through the co-op. So... Uh, Go ahead and describe this game. What, what is this game? So RoboQuest is the fast action FPS with a roguelike mechanic. So um, for the game feel, uh, FPS part is more close to what you might uh, play in uh, Dooms, Quakes, and those kind of game with like a tight movement, fast, and reactivity. With uh, roguelike uh, loops, so uh, die and retry, uh, tiny progression between the runs. Uh, boss fightings and uh, every exciting aspect of uh, roguelikes. So when I first played this, and I don't know if this was intentional, but this is the feel that I got because of the comic book nature of it. And I've spent a ton of time with Borderlands. I immediately felt like I was like, this does have a Borderlands kind of feel, which yep. I mean, it kind of that game is also based around you know your dooms and and whatnots as well just wilder so was there any inspiration from borderlands at all uh, actually the surprising part is uh initially there's not much inspiration for borderland even for the, the graphical uh, part of the game okay uh, we pretty much want to go uh, some kind of comic cartoonish style from the beginning and uh, as we build up, uh, we want to avoid having uh, complete cell shadings because uh, it don't let us enough uh, place to play with the, the graphics, make everything look really flat. So we want to try to have something close to cell shading, but a little bit more uh, depth uh, in, the, in the textures and stuff. So initially, we, we have in reference like Overwatch, Ratchet and Clanks, uh, for the distillation textures, but yeah. uh, as we, uh, when we start to use the like the outlines and stuff like that, we obviously played uh, Borderlands. So I think it was in our mind, and it might have affected us at some point. Sure. But it wasn't in all major uh, references. So I think there's still the influence, and we can truly really say it's not. Uh, I think for the the ashing and the uh, the shadows and stuff like that. But. Uh, it wasn't our direct uh, references for development. Kind of talk to me about what's the uh, premise about the, the movement. So um, the game is actually... Uh, we're developing the game uh, for a pretty long time uh, because uh, we actually have five years of developing on the game, uh, at least on the project. But the two years and a half, the two first years and a half, was mostly developing a prototype for the game, uh, playing around with uh, just the moving part and practicing art style, learning uh, Unreal Engine and stuff like that. So um, the, there's a lot of fields that have been reworked from scratch, so mostly art have been started uh, all from scratch when we start the final version of the game, so around two years ago, two years and a half. But the, the gameplay part was just uh, work for this entire five year. So there's a lot of um, different tests uh, to really try to catch the, the perfect moving speed, control, uh, air control. So we really want uh, the control to be really responsive and to fit well the, the, the forward um, aspect of the game. And so uh, it's just really come up to a lot of testing, a lot of trying, trying other game, uh, other even like style of game, just trying to see like uh, what we can do with the movements. It's also tied with uh, projectiles, uh, speeds and stuff like that. So there is a lot of uh, data. It's still something we're tweaking uh, right now. Uh, as we start to have feedback, even with really fast movements, people still feel they lack a little bit of um, movement abilities, so we are trying to add uh, some tiny um, slide, power slide and stuff like that. Oh, okay, you guys are going to add a slide, nice. Yep. Now, I, I want to focus on these cores for a second. 
It took me a second to understand what was going on here, but go ahead and explain how these cores function. So uh, the game is uh, oriented around uh, four categories of weapons. So we have uh, the assault weapon, precision, demolition, and technology. And uh, it's basically uh, the, the build, uh, it's just going to turn around the uh, categorization of weapons. And so the core, uh, for now, core is static uh, damage augmentation for a certain type of weapons. So if you have a uh, one point in precision, you're going to have uh, five or five or 10% damage for all those uh, weapon. But uh, it's just being reworked too to add a little bit more depth. And so um, what we're doing right now is uh, adding a little bit more uh, attributes to the stat. So precision also gonna increase your uh, critical damage. Ah. Um, demolition gonna increase your um, area of effect size and stuff like that. And those core is basically you have free slot and uh, you can uh, improve those stats to um, kind of fit with your uh, gameplay. So right now is mostly uh, you're gonna pick one category of weapon and just uh, play with. But uh, with the next update, uh, you will have to prioritize a secondary um, attribute uh, if you wanna get the full potential for your build. So we are just adding few layers and uh, also working in the <laughs> the readability of different mechanics, because right now uh, we know a few things are a little bit confusing uh, when first playing the game, so we are also working a lot on that part. So how how far can you go with this game? How many levels do you have? When does it end? Uh, so for now we have uh, five levels, but uh, it's not like you're not gonna like for one run at least you're not gonna go through those five levels because we have an uh, altern alternative path. But uh, there is uh, two bows, so um, and here you have a tiny secret. Oh yeah, that's right. And so uh, we have uh, two bows for now. Uh, when you beat the, the second boss, the, the the early access over. So you go through a four level during your playthrough. You start with the canyons, uh, then you can go to Oasis. That's where we are right now uh, with the boss. And then uh, uh, we will see if you if we beat the boss, you can discover the, the new levels because it's kind of linked to the the story. So the, the game have a story. Uh, for now, uh, story element is uh, really poor. In the game uh, is the part that is. Uh, uh, I have the less uh, amount of work right now. Okay. So we still have tiny cinematics. We still have uh, some elements to kind of tell people who are curious what it's about. But um, there's still a lot to come uh, about uh, what happened in this world and uh, uh, what kind of level you're going to go through and stuff like that. So um, one of the, the reasons uh, we have only two-player cooperation, uh, for now at least, uh, is uh, we want the difficulties and setting to be pretty close uh, when you play alone or cooperation. Uh, and it was pretty hard with, let's say, four-player to have the exact same experience. So the level will have to be bigger, the, the scale of enemy of number will have to be like uh, way too huge, and uh, the game will just lose it a bit, like the, the vibe uh, he had. So uh, that, that's also uh, difficulties is part of why we have two-player cooperation, and it, we also uh, kind of like this uh, brother in arms uh, aspect for the game. Uh, okay. Uh, for now, uh, we have uh, not uh, all the levels we want for the, the final game, obviously. So uh, the difficulty have been balanced to um, curve enough um, between the, the few levels we have. It might just be rebalanced a tiny bit uh, when we have more levels. So maybe the the curve between the first and the second level will be a tiny bit lower. Uh, it's mostly come to try to put the player in the comfort zone in the first uh, levels. Uh, so uh, telling him the basic mechanics, most of the, the enemies just uh, shoot at you the, the kind of slow ball and you just have to kind of dash through when uh, after we have uh, 
let's say the the, the kind of shock thunder enemy that just uh, stunning you with like a lot of prediction. So it will just um, force you to jump a little bit more, taking the high ground, prioritize uh, that enemy you want to kill first and stuff like that. So we're pushing the player to learn a little bit about what enemies is facing and how we have to deal with them. And so uh, it's just continue with uh, different level. We have uh, alternate uh, paths for the first uh, level. So uh, after the canyon, you can go to the mine. It's a level that is a uh. little bit uh, harder. Uh, so Are the player can greater? go there and expect maybe more reward or more different secrets and stuff. And then uh, when you finish the game, for now we have a uh, hero plus one to freeze, so it's just scale up uh, up to five. Uh, for now it's mostly uh, damage and HP scale, but it's mostly a placeholder uh, mechanics, and uh, we will work at some point on a real New Game Plus experience with uh, more depth to it. Let's see if I can get my first win on the boss here. <laughs> So, you mentioned the crit spot on the boss. Do other enemies have crit spots in this game? I, uh, I haven't seen it. I'm not sure so that's because of the, the crit spot for enemy is the eye, so every time you see a red glowing part, uh, it's supposed to be the, the crit spot. Some okay. enemies don't have it. Uh, so, m some turrets, mostly turret, I think, don't have a uh, crit spot. Because they were uh, try to be a counter for precision build, but yeah, most of them have the, the kind of red eye. I think it still need a tiny bit of work to uh, be more clear and readable. And it will probably be with the the, the crit uh, stats for the. Um, the precision build uh, when we will just rework it. So more we damage the bows, more is gonna be fast. So we have to be careful because yeah, uh, it start to get pretty fast right now. Yeah, and he likes to go after me apparently. Oh dear, that's painful. That's pretty well for now. Oh dear. Oof. Oh, he's almost dead. Oh my yeah. gosh. Woo. That All was right. close. That was very <laughs> close. Alright, so I see on the end of each level, every time you complete something, you get a rank. It yep. accumulates how many cells and the time. How do you get a rank A? The highest I've gotten is B. So um, we have a few feedbacks of people thinking the rank is uh, a little bit rough sometimes because it's like just pointing at the fact they play bad the game. Um, it was for us uh, a way to tell the player he didn't uh, play the most uh, optimized way. So basically, cells in the game is really important because you will uh, reload your skills and uh, give you XP to level up. So uh, if a player just play a hide and seek, he's not going to gather the cells. And um, Obviously, it's not going to level up, so you're going to struggle later in the game. So we want to put the rank to tell the player, okay, look, you didn't really do well in here because you didn't collect uh, the cells and you went really fast. So maybe if you try to play more aggressive, going faster and gather yourself, uh, you would just do better. So I think it's uh, another different, like, we still need to polish and just think a little bit about this mechanics to make it more appealing. All right, so let's go through... I think the biggest thing is the upgrade section. Where is that? Right here? here? Yeah. 
So here we can upgrade the base camp. So that way we can get some permanent upgrades. Can you describe that process? Obviously very rogue light ish. Um, you get to keep some permanent stuff to help you for the next time. What kind of stuff can we work with? Yes, so uh, between run progression was quite important because uh, in roguelike, you, you're going to make a lot of run and making a run that don't count could be kind of frustrating. Like, okay, I, I, I play an hour and I didn't have anything, didn't progress through anything. It's like I just waste an hour even if you are skilled progressing and stuff. So we want to have a uh, progression because obviously it's just uh, important to bring the mechanics one by one, control a bit what the player have access and uh, give a lot of excitement for unlocking stuff. But we want to try to avoid having uh, simulate difficulties. So there's a lot of roguelike that just ask you to grind to have more HP, more damage and stuff like that. And it's just something that we don't really like uh, for video games. We want the player to be able to install the game, start a run, and just completely destroy the game for the, the first run, if he's, uh, if you have the skill for. So in here, most of what you're going to unlock is uh, convenient stuff. Uh, so you could have, uh, you can unlock classes, you can unlock a uh, bigger chest that's going to give you more choice for weapons, uh, for core. Um, so obviously, right now, it's just the first iteration of the base camp. So there's going to be more, a lot of things going to change. Um, but yeah, it's basically having more tool for the next run to have more control over the randomization. So uh, when you level up, you're going to have choice between more perks. Uh, you're going to have choice between more weapons at the beginning. And so uh, when you start to be confident with the game, the game gives you the tools to control uh, your builds and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm looking at these different sections, and I think the ones that speak to me the most are the core library and the gunsmith. Yep. And I feel like that's where I have the trouble. But I can imagine, like, as I get further, then stuff like, you know, uh, whatever upgrades from the labus or the labus, um, the armory. Yeah, allowing you to bounce on enemies' heads, like... That's interesting. <laughs> yeah. You know, like what kind of? Actually, I'm gonna craft right now and see what what happens after that. Nothing. But it's yet. a few things we are discussing internally too. Is like, for example, bouncing on enemy head is something that is really funny, and we're thinking if it's worth uh, putting that uh, behind a uh, unlock, or if we can just give it to the player right at the beginning, um, because it is it's actually a really, really funny mechanic. So there's like a lot of mechanics where are just like tweaking and like uh, adding some more, obviously. We also have artifact. You can have one per run. Uh, if you upgrade your base camp, you can own two. And it's just give you tiny boost and stuff. So this mechanic is all the... Uh, the thing of like, it's the first iteration on everything in here. We just basically try out things. It's also... Um, the technical aspect of it is done for us, so now we we have more time to work on the, the contents. Everything is here. We have the base camp, and we can just try out uh, new blocks, uh, new mechanics in it. We also want to add um, range things. So the range is what you use to upgrade your base camp. And uh, for player who play the game a lot, they need something what we call the range sync. Is uh, something you can invest your range like constantly. Let's say for reroll. Re <clears throat> Sorry, reward weapons or perks and stuff like that. So you still like uh, need them even when you are really late in the game to do things. All right, so this game is in early access. When is the time frame, particularly for RoboQuest 1.0? Uh, we initially looking around eight to ten months. We don't want the access to go for too long, but uh, if we need a little bit more time to have a Polish game, we will take a little bit more time. But you might expect something to be around ten months. And uh, right now we are working on the first uh, tiny update. So I don't know when the, the video is going to be out, but maybe the update is going to be here at the time. And so. Um, we also trying out because making a stable version is a lot of work. So if we see people need this tiny update, it might just ask us to take a little bit more time for developments, but it's just a matter of few months, like two or three shouldn't be too much. So we, we I think we all want to finish the game and have a 
Polish game, just uh, something pretty ambitious uh, for a tiny studio like us. But uh, yeah, we, we're just holding up and everyone hard at work. So yeah, sh should just keep her on uh, this time. Let's say, I think it won't go more than a year, but again, it's just hard prediction. <laughs> Absolutely. And where can people buy this game and what platforms will it be available on? Uh, for now, it's only on Steam, uh, so early access on Steam. We are in discussion for more, but nothing I can uh, talk right now because everything's subject to change, nothing is done yet, so we don't want to create hypes or whatever. So for now, only Steam, and uh, we are working uh, background to bring the game uh, as much platform and place as we can. All right. Well, I appreciate your time, Amy. Yep, thank you for thank showing you. us RoboQuest. This is RoboQuest, available on Steam. Again, was there a price with that? Uh, I, uh, so dollar, I don't know. I think it's... Uh, uh, you can say it in euros oh. or pounds. I think it's euros. It's uh, 16, uh, something like that. Okay. And we also have the, the soundtrack available. So there might be a pack with the, 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 the soundtrack. So it's made by No Scream. Uh, a really, really talented artist that just really bring the game to uh, a new level. So I uh, just want to make a shout out for him because he's doing an amazing work. All and, right. Uh, yeah. All right. Appreciate it, Amy. This is RoboQuest. My name is Anthony for Gaming Trend. Appreciate y'all watching. Talk to you later. Thank you.